Story time about how my husband makes me pay for everything and still controls all of my money while he's totally unemployed and broke. Disclaimer is not my story time. Send me on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for six years. Two of those years we were separated and we recently got back together last year. Losses dropped during COVID so when we got back together he didn't have a lot of money. Obviously, I didn't really mind. I was just happy we were getting back together. And if you're wondering why we separated, it's because he got really jealous and controlling of everything I ever did. When we got back together, I told him that he needed to change that. And I really could see a change in him this time around. The only problem was that he refused to get a job. I have a really good salary. I make about $80,000 a month. Theoretically, I could totally support him. When I asked him why he didn't want to get a job, he told me that it just wasn't for him. And he also told me that he wanted some time off and he just wanted to travel. Well, this is when things start to get complicated. When we got back together, he was living with this parents so he ended up moving into my very nice apartment I live in a really beautiful high-rise have a doorman a gym indoor pool and then he moved in with all of his junk i had to start paying for everything anytime he wanted to go to dinner or order food or buy groceries i was the one footing the bill he even uses my amazon account to order whatever he wants While he was at home playing video games i was in my office working my ass off but things got worse part two is Story time about how my husband controls all my money while he's unemployed and totally broke. Disclaimer is now I started telling him to me on Instagram. After three months of me paying for everything and him using my Amazon account to buy whatever he wanted, including gaming consoles, this man had the audacity to tell me that I was spending too much money on my designer bags. Yeah, you heard that right. One day I decided to treat myself for my birthday by getting myself a Chanel bag. As soon as he saw the new purchase, he started acting like I was addicted to shopping. And then he starts bringing up all these other things. How I like going to Starbucks. How I like going to the nail salon. And that's when I realized it. He had access to my bank account. He could see all of the transactions that I was making. And of course he could. I was in my office all day while he had access to my laptop at home. And of course it didn't occur to me to change my passwords. I was actually really shocked when he started bringing all of this up. Then he suggested that I should let him manage my money. And at first I just went with it. Said okay and that's when he literally took my credit card from me. Then he started moving money around my accounts and started buying crypto. After two months of that, I was done. I asked him to give me my credit card back, which he did. He started guilting me into feeling like I shouldn't go to the nail salon and do these little small things that make me feel good about myself. He was brainwashing me. A few weeks later, it was time for me to upgrade my car. So I decided to get a Tesla. And when I told him, he got so angry. I could see in his face that he was so envious. He spent two hours trying to talk me out of getting the stupid Tesla. But the very next day, I went straight to the Tesla store and bought my car. When I finally got the car, he started driving it all over town before I drove it. Part 3 is up. Story time about how my husband controls all my money while he's totally broke and unemployed. Disclaimer is not my story time, but send me on Instagram. After he started driving my brand new Tesla before I did, I started getting really snippy with him. I was always angry and in a bad mood. That's when he started getting even more controlling and this time jealous again. He started to suspect that I was cheating on him. He started showing up to my office to just check on me. By the way, I'm totally aware that if I leave him, he has no money. So of course he's going to be totally controlling of me. Unfortunately, this is when we started getting into really big fights. I reproached him for everything. Him controlling all of my money and literally telling me what I could or could not buy. And I finally mustered up the courage to ask him to get a job again. And I told him that if he didn't get a job to start paying for half of the bills and everything else, that I would simply file for divorce. He started to cry and he threw a tantrum, but eventually he said yes. Do you think that he moved a muscle to go get a job? No, he didn't. So I took it upon myself to see if my company was hiring. And they did. So now he's got a really good job because of me. I revoked all his access to my accounts and I have full control of all the crypto. Now I give him a weekly allowance. I cannot wait until he starts getting paid. My parents think I should get a divorce, but I'm not sure. What should I do? Story time about how I caught my husband with his mistress. My husband and I, or should I say my has-been of a husband, have been married for nine years. Disclaimer, this is not my story time, it was sent to me. My husband and I also have two kids. When we met, I was totally out of his league and he knew it. We met through friends and he made sure to tell all of my friends how much he wanted to be with me. At the time, I was modeling to pay my way through school, so I had no time for a boyfriend. But he got pretty insistent. We went out on a few dates and he treated me really well, better than all the guys I had met at that time. He was a gentleman, always picked up the tab and treated me with respect. So when he asked me to be his girlfriend, I said yes. Two years later, he asked me to be his wife and I said yes. We were truly in love and best of all, we were best friends. I could talk to him about anything because he wasn't the jealous type. Four months ago, he asked me for an open relationship. Of course I said no and this made him really angry. I got really suspicious and started checking his phone when he'd fall asleep. And that's when I found pictures of him with a girl at a hotel doing naughty things to each other. Part 2 is up. Once he fell asleep, I checked his phone and that's when I found pictures of him with another girl at a hotel doing naughty things to each other. Clamor, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I decided not to confront him. Instead, I started gathering evidence. I started following him around everywhere after I dropped the kids off at school. Mind you, I quit my job because he wanted me to stay at home with the kids. On the first day I started following him, he went to a hotel. Since I didn't want him to see me, I stayed in my car. 
40 minutes, he exits the hotel with a woman. By the way, these were not cheap hotels. A few days later, I followed him to a strip club. I checked his bank account and he had withdrawn $2,000 that same day. That's when I really got upset. A few days later, I followed him to an apartment complex. That's when I see a woman opening the door and it was the same woman from the hotel. My stomach dropped. After about a week, I mustered up the courage to go talk to her. When she opened the door, she recognized me instantly. She tried to close the door in my face, but I pushed my way in. Then the coward ran to her room and locked herself in their part. My husband's mistress runs to her room and locks the door when she sees me. What a coward. I ran right after her and I told her that I wasn't going to hurt her and that I just wanted to talk. Of course, she asked me to leave, but I told her I wasn't going to move an inch until we talked. She comes out and we proceed to talk for three hours. She explained to me that she's an escort and that my husband pays for her apartment. She also told me that she wasn't in love with him and that she really only needed the money. This made me very happy. She also told me that aside from paying for her apartment, he gave her an allowance of $3,000 a month. Oh yeah, and that she knew about me and the kids. That's when I lost it. I took my pepper spray out of my purse and sprayed her. Fortunately, it didn't directly hit her in the face, but it still got her. I went straight to a lawyer and presented all the evidence. When I got home, my husband asked me how I found out. I showed him all the evidence and he was stunned. He's begging me not to divorce him because he knows it's going to be really expensive. I kicked him out and he went to his mom's house. His mom was angry and she didn't let him stay there. How much should I ask for? Caught my husband making out with another man on our honeymoon and I'm refusing to give him a divorce. My husband and I met on a blind date. Our friends had set us up and they made him sound like a Greek god. And he kind of is. He's super tall, attractive, Greek, tan. His dream is to become a politician and he owns several businesses. I own my own marketing agency and we're both addicted to work. We're literal workaholics. When we went on our first date, I was so surprised to see how much we had in common. Both super work driven we also found a lot of the same things funny this was such a relief to me because i've never been on a blind date before and we talked about a lot of stuff including our sexy preferences he told me he only liked women and i was like okay cool and i told him of course i only liked men he actually ended up going on a total of 15 dates before he asked me to be his girlfriend everything just felt so amazing and right we had amazing chemistry he made me laugh and we had a lot of fun in the bedroom after a few months he asked me to be his wife and i was so happy i said yes he hired the best wedding planner in our city and we got to planning we were both really involved and everything. The wedding was spectacular. We got married in the winter, so it was snowing outside. It was beautiful. We had an orchestra, amazing catering, so I was really happy. The day after that, we went on our honeymoon. Planned to go to several Greek islands. Our first stop was Santorini. I actually got in really good shape for the honeymoon. I had abs. I wanted to look as sexy as I could for him. A few days into our stay, we found this really cute cafe, and the server at the cafe was actually really handsome. Him and my husband got along really well. So well that I caught them making out at our hotel. Part two is up. I caught my husband kissing another man on our honeymoon and I'm refusing to give him a divorce. As I walked into the hotel, I could see two men kissing in a corner. Obviously, I didn't know it was my hubby, so I turned away. I went straight up to our bedroom and I couldn't find him. I called his cell phone, but there was no answer, so I went right back down to the lobby. And this is when I look again at the two guys kissing in the corner. I could only see one of the guy's backs and obviously I didn't recognize it as my husband. Not until I see my husband's hand creeping up on the back of this guy's neck. And immediately, I recognize his hand and the ring. I thought it was a joke at first until I could see they were passionately making out. I yelled my husband's name and they both turned to look at me. That's when I saw it was the server from the damn cafe that my husband and I had been going to almost every single morning. The same guy my husband was talking to almost every single day. The server ran out of the hotel. He obviously was not looking to confront me. That's when my husband grabs my arm and takes me to the pool area. That's when he confessed that he thought he was bi and that he was just experimenting. And he also said that the server basically forced him to kiss him. I told him he should have been honest with me from the beginning about being attracted to guys and that the least he could have done was not make out with this guy in the hotel of our lobby. He started to apologize but I couldn't even talk to him. I still wanted to enjoy the trip so I got my own hotel room. That very same night my husband tells me that we should consider a divorce and that he thinks he might have really serious feelings for the server. I said no. I would be so embarrassed if I go home right now and tell my entire family and friends that my husband left me for another man. Not to mention the fact that he totally wasted my time. I asked him if we could just work this out and he's asking for an open relationship now. And of course I'm totally in love with him. We just got married. I'm just so confused. What should I do? Story time about how I found my boyfriend with his best friend. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost six years. We met in cosmetology school. We both had a love for makeup and hair. While in school, we decided to partner up and open up our own little business. I started liking him from the moment we met, but he never made a move on me. And I was not used to that. So we were friends for a few months. One night, we went out with our friends and we got a little drunk and one thing led to another and I kissed him. He kissed me back and after that, we were inseparable. We even moved in together and we talked about marriage. But ultimately, he would never propose. I always asked him when we were going to get married and he just never had an answer. His best friend let's call him Roger. Roger was a great guy and he always hung out with us. I liked him. They would hang out all the time and I never thought anything of it because they were best friends. One day Roger made a comment about my boyfriend being really good looking. I brushed it off but a few days later I walk into our apartment and there they are on the couch doing stuff. I literally passed out. Part two is up. 
I walk in on my boyfriend and his male best friend on the couch doing things to each other. I actually fainted as soon as I saw it. All the blood rushed to my head and I passed out. And when I came to, they're both standing over me half naked. My boyfriend picked me up from the floor and put me on the couch. And Roger went to the kitchen to get me a drink. I felt dizzy and I couldn't even speak. I blurted out, you're gay? Then my boyfriend started crying. He said he didn't mean to hurt me and that he never wanted to waste my time. I asked him how long he'd known that he was gay. And he said for a few years. That meant I was wasting all of my youth on him. I could have had children. I could have been married already. I was so upset. Then guess what? My boyfriend says he's going to go stay at Roger's place so that he can give me some space. Of course I begged him not to leave because I knew that would be the end of us. I thought we could work through this. He packed his stuff and left. Part 3 is up. My boyfriend left me for his best friend who's a guy. A few days passed by and I was super devastated. That's when my boyfriend comes and knocks on my door. Then he gave me the worst news of all. He told me he was gonna marry his best friend Roger. He explained to me that they had been in love for a long time but they never told each other anything. It was only until recently that they started hooking up. Looking back it all makes sense. He and Roger would hang out all the time and I was never invited. Roger even got my boyfriend hired as a makeup artist at his job. They were constantly together. But at the same time, I had never seen my boyfriend so happy. He said he could finally be himself. This is when I realized that it was for the best. I stopped begging him to get back with me and I started dating other people. They even invited me to their wedding, which was beautiful. Now we have dinner a few times a month and I've got a new boyfriend. Life is crazy. Story time about how I got arrested for stalking my celebrity crush. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. When I was 15, I saw my celebrity crush for the first time in a movie. After that, I pretty much went to all of his movie premieres and events. I was able to take a picture with him and even got a signature. To say that I was obsessed was an understatement. Now, here's where the problem began. He started dating this woman, aka another celebrity, and I pretty much lost it after that. At the time, I was living with my mother and she couldn't help but notice the change in me. I started staying out pretty late, mostly because um, I was out in the city looking for him. I knew all of his hangout spots because the paparazzi always caught him there. So I basically would hang out everywhere he would. I followed him to his house, I followed him to the gym, and I followed him to the grocery store pretty much everywhere. I decided to sign up to his gym, and I started talking to him, and he started talking to me, and he asked me out on a date. Part 2 is up. After stalking him for a while, my celebrity crush asked me out on a date. But he didn't know I was stalking him, of course. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. On the date, he pretty much only talked about himself. He told me he had just broken up with his ex, which I knew that. And I basically pretended not to know anything about him. There was lots of awkward silence and I just couldn't help but stare at him the whole time. That's when he asked for the check and paid for dinner. I was totally expecting him to ask me to go back to his place. Well, when he didn't, I was really disappointed. So I did the logical thing. I invited myself over. That's when he told me that he couldn't because he had to get up early. After that, I didn't hear back from him at all. So I decided to go to the gym where I knew he was going to be. But when I tried to say hello to him, he told me to stay away. Then he asked one of the gym employees to escort me out. And when I got home, the cops were waiting for me to arrest me. They showed me pictures of me stalking my celebrity crush part three. As soon as I got home, the cops were there and they arrested me. And they showed me pictures of me stalking my celebrity crush. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Since they had all this evidence and my face on the pictures, I couldn't say it wasn't me. They told me that after our date, my celebrity crush got a really bad feeling from me. So he decided to install cameras around his house and in his car. And well, that's when he caught me stalking him around his house at odd hours and following him in my car all the time. I was taken to court and told I had to go to therapy. Apparently, he felt bad for me though and didn't want to press charges. He did get a restraining order, so I definitely can't go near him. The good news is that I have another celebrity crush. Yay! Story time about how I almost got arrested for selling my mom's underwear. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My mom is a total MILF. She used to be in music videos back in the early 2000s. So obviously, I had to find a way to monetize this. When I turned 16, I knew that I wanted to start making my own money. I had heard about people selling pictures of their feet on the internet, so I thought, why don't I try that with my mom? By the way, I am a dude. So I got on Google and started searching how I can sell my mom's pictures, specifically of her feet. So every time my mom would go to get her pedicures done, I would just offer to take pictures of her feet for Instagram. She thought this was really weird, so she would say no. I would try to sneak pictures every now and then, but she would always catch me. So eventually I scrapped that plan and I moved on to her underwear. I found a website that was talking all about how you can sell your own underwear, and obviously since I'm a dude, nobody's going to want to buy mine. And I know, what I'm about to say is pretty gross, but I started stealing my mom's dirty underwear. So obviously I had to start keeping track of every time my mom showered. I would go into the bathroom and steal her underwear. Then I would put them in Ziploc bags and this was the best way to conserve any, you know. And then I would mail it off to dudes. Well, within a month, I was making at least $500.
But my mom started freaking out because she couldn't figure out where all her underwear went. She asked me about her underwear, but obviously I played it off like I had no idea what she was talking about. After about three months, things were going really well. I was selling my mom's underwear sometimes for $100 a pop. And here's a gross detail, but guys wanted my mom's underwear, especially after she exercised. Totally disgusting and weird, I know. Things were going way too good. I was making tons of money, and I was able to buy myself all the things that I wanted. And my mom, of course, started noticing all this new stuff that I had in my room. Well, little did I know, but my mom had installed cameras in her bathroom and in the house. So basically, I was being filmed every second of my day. But of course, I had no idea, so I just kept doing what I was doing. I would wait for my mom to shower, then I would steal her underwear and ship it off to these dudes. I was home alone one day, and there's a knock on the door. And when I opened it, it's the police. They had a warrant to search my house. Of course, my mom comes home and she explains to me that she installed cameras in her bathroom and that she caught some dude stealing her underwear. I literally couldn't believe they hadn't figured out it was me. So I totally played it off and acted like I was shocked. Then my mom called me into her bedroom and started showing me all the footage. It was totally obvious it was me. Then I got handcuffs put on me. Then my mom busted out laughing. She said that they wouldn't arrest me, but that I needed to learn my lesson. The cops warned me saying that if I ever did that again, I could definitely get arrested. But when they left, my mom asked me how much money I'd been making. When I showed her how much money I'd been making, she said, let's keep doing this. We're still in business. about the girl who tried to talk me into doing the nasty with her dad oh yeah this is gonna be a wild one so buckle up bitches okay so a little background information during this time i was a senior in high school and the one night my best friend and i decided to go to this party on the south side which we usually wouldn't go down there unless a bunch of our other friends were going but it was our friend alexis's birthday and we decided to make an exception for her now we weren't really good friends with alexis so we didn't really know the people that she hung out with or at least i didn't my best friend did because her and alexis were a lot closer than i was to alexis well, when we got to dinner, there were a bunch of other people there. A bunch of people that I didn't know, but my best friend knew them. But there was this one girl in particularly that I actually was having a lot of fun with. We're going to call her Jessie. So usually I would never come to these things with my best friend because I never had any fun. But surprisingly, we were having a really, really, really good time. Like we were all having drinks, which I was surprised about because usually with Alexis, there was always drama. Like this girl was queen of stirring the pot and just making high school interesting. We all know one of those, sadly. Well, after the party, my friend and I got an Uber home. And while we were in the Uber, I was asking her about about this girl Jessie. I was like, oh, like how come we never hung out with her? She seems really nice, really funny, really cool. Somebody that I could see us being friends with. Well, my best friend, she was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? She was like, don't ever talk to her. And I was like, why? And she was like, she's just like a really weird person. Like everyone who ends up becoming best friends with her always distance themselves because she's just super weird. So initially I'm feeling bad. I'm like, okay, so you all are just a-holes and don't want to be friends with this girl. We don't claim that energy, sis. But another thing is, is that I low-key did not believe my best friend. I know you're probably thinking, well, why wouldn't you believe your best friend? Like, why would she lie to you? Sis. Hmm. You don't know her like I do. Trigger warning for the next part of this story time. I will put a timestamp down below so you can skip ahead. It kind of has to do with essay, I think. No, I didn't really believe her because my best friend was the jealous type of best friend. Like the overprotective, you were not allowed to be friends with no one else 
best friend. Let me give you guys a little example. By the way, my best friend and I have been best friends since we were probably in first grade. So back whenever I was in fourth grade, I started being friends with this other girl. We're gonna call her Kelsey. Well, Kelsey and I, we started hanging out a lot, you know, like after school, we would go to each other's houses. And I guess that my best friend, we'll call her Allie. Allie did not like her. She didn't like that I was being friends with her. She felt like I was being ripped away from her and I was never gonna be friends with her. I was just gonna put her on the back burner. Well, because she got jealous that I was hanging out with this girl so much, she decided that she was gonna become best friends with her too, which I didn't care about. I was in fourth grade. All I wanted to do was play Barbies. Like, what the fuck? Well, that day after she went over this girl's house, this girl never spoke to me again. Never spoke a word to me again. And I was telling Allie about it. And she goes, oh, I was playing a prank on her. And I was like, oh, what kind of prank? She goes, I told her that your dad touches me. But I didn't see the harm in that. So I went home and I told my dad, sis, my dad and my mother were livid as they should be so my dad had called my best friend's parents and they all had a meeting blah blah blah. but yeah so that is the whole story of why I do not trust her for shit when it comes to me being friends with other people I know you guys are probably thinking oh well how are you guys still friends after that my parents knew that she was young and you know like even though it was a really bad situation they knew that she was my best friend so yeah, but then my best friend's parents had to call this girl's parents to tell her, hey, um, yeah, my kid told your kid this. And I just want to let you know that is completely not true. She made it up. But still, even after that, we never talked again. Okay, so back to present day. That is pretty much why I did not trust her whenever she told me things about people that I wanted to become friends with. So eventually, I end up asking Alexis for this girl's number. And I text her and I'm like, hey, like, you know, I had a lot of fun with you at the party. Would you want to hang out sometime? She was like, OMG, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Da 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 da. So eventually her and I made plans to hang out and the first few times she came over my house because I guess her dad and her mom were going through a divorce and her mom had to finish getting all of her stuff out of the house. Well, I think like two weeks after the first time we hung out, I had went over her house finally. Can I just say, I wish I would have listened to my best friend now, but it's too late for any of that shit. So I went over there. We had a really good time. We pretty much just stayed up all night playing drinking games. Well, I want to say like four in the morning. We're still awake, by the way. We have like people over right now. It was like two of our guy friends and Jesse and I. Well, like I said, at around three or four in the morning, her dad comes home. I thought this man was gonna be pissed or something like that, but when he came in, he was actually super chill. Well, he comes over and he starts playing drinking games with us. And while we're playing these games, he comes over and he stands next to me and he starts being very creepy, to say the least. He comes over, he stands next to me, and while he's standing next to me, he like has his hand on my lower back. And he's like, oh, like, how are you, sweetie? I've never met you. You must be a new friend. You're really gorgeous. She always brings home the prettiest friends. And then he's like, but you're by far the best. And then he yells over to his daughter and says, you brought over a hot one, kid. You brought over a hot one, kid. That's not sitting right with me. And I know it's not sitting right with y'all either. So, of course, at this point, I'm feeling super uncomfortable. And I decide that it's either time for me to go up and go to sleep or get an Uber home So I went over to my friend and I was like, hey, like I'm not feeling good right now I need to go to bed or I need to go home and she's like, oh, are you sure and I'm like I never really saw you come in until you turned me around And 
she was like, well, do you want to go sleep in my room? And I'm like, yeah, that would probably be best. So as I am walking up to her room, her room was on the third floor, by the way. Who do you think comes trotting up the stairs behind me? Her creepy, musty, dusty, old ass father. Not to mention, I decided to dress like a thought that night because cute boys were coming over. So I was wearing this really, 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 really short dress because I thought I was going to be getting some from the boys who were my age. Clearly not. So I get to the top of the stairs and he's like, oh, sweetie, let me show you to her bedroom. Even though I already knew where it was. Did not need help. I was like, oh, no, like, I'm fine. I know where it is. Thank you, though. And he was like, oh, well, you know what? This is a really nice house. Let me show you the rest of it. Can you just get the hint, please? Clearly not. And I tried telling him no and I was tired, but he was like, no, I insist, I insist. So eventually I just said okay and he was showing me around the house and while he was doing that, he had my arm intertwined with his freaking creep and eventually he leads me to his bedroom bathroom and he goes, you want to know something? You're really lucky. He's like, I don't even let my daughter in this bathroom. And I'm like, oh, like, how come? You know, just trying to, like, move it along, you know, so that way he can say what he needs to say and we can go. He's like, well, I only like to bring very beautiful guests in here. Then I got concerned for my safety and his daughter's. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, it would be weird if you brought your daughter in here. And he was like, exactly. He was like, people think I'm weird whenever I say that, but I say it's just not right. So at this point, because things are going so weird, I literally called myself an Uber while we were like touring around the upstairs. And as soon as he goes and starts like rubbing his hand up and down my back, I run out of the house. I was not feeling it whatsoever. And after that night, I did not call or text her for a few weeks which is completely understandable. But then I realized that it wasn't her fault and maybe like, you know, she knows that her dad is like this. So I ended up calling her and I was like, hey, do you have time to talk? And she was like, hey, yeah, what's up? What's wrong? I haven't heard from you in so long. Like you've been ignoring my messages and everything. So eventually I had told her what happened that night. And eventually I got to the part where I was like, hey, like, you know, is there anything going on at home that you want to talk about? And she goes, OMG, are you calling my dad a pedo? And me, I'm kind of just like, yeah, no, yes, mm, yes. And she's like, girl, it wasn't even like that. She was like, I told you he's been going through a divorce. Like, he came home really drunk that night. He even told me to apologize for him. Like, he feels so bad about what happened. And then she made me feel bad about the situation. She was like, to be honest, she was like, you were actually really rude to my dad. And I'm surprised that you were like that because I told you what's been going on with our family. So eventually I do start to think to myself, like, wow, I was really a dick. So that weekend I went over there and I had apologized to her dad and he was like, you know, sweetie, it's okay. We all just go through rough things in life and you know, I'm sorry for how I acted. He was like, it's just been really hard trying to cope with everything that's been going on lately. So eventually after that, things went back to normal, but then they started getting weird again. All of a sudden, instead of hanging out with kids our age, whenever we went over there, we would hang out with her dad and her dad's older guy friends which I obviously thought was super odd and it's like now for some reason her dad felt more comfortable making comments to me around her like whenever his friends were around he'd be like oh like why don't you come in sit on my lap yeah creepy af but to be honest at this time i really didn't have anybody else to hang out with because my best friend was mad at me because i wasn't hanging out with her as much as i used to so if i ever wanted to get out of my house the only person's house that i could really go to was jesse's well fast forward it had been two months now since i'd been hanging out with jesse and i go over her house the one night and surprisingly i don't see her dad there which i was super happy about so we were hanging out up in her room, just watching movies, you know, painting our nails, doing girly shit. When we hear a door bust open downstairs and slam shut. And she gets up, she's like, oh, I think my dad's home. So she runs downstairs. 
So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay, great. Now I have to see this girl's freaking dad again. Like, that's amazing. Well, she runs upstairs like 10 seconds later and she's like, OMG, you're never gonna guess what my dad said about you. And I'm like, didn't really want to know, but I was like, oh, what did he say? She's like, I don't know. I feel so weird telling you. Like, I don't want you to get weirded out like you did last time. And I was like, okay, then don't tell me. Like, I really did not want to know because at the time I was literally ordering my lift. And she was like okay fine 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 i'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell you my dad said that he would totally fuck you sis no that's a big no no we don't do that here uh-uh uh. no and i was like ew that's really fucking weird and she's like no 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 he didn't mean it like that like he was just like joking around so usually when this would happen i would just laugh it off and continue on with our night but tonight i just decided was not the night for that so i told her i was leaving i grabbed my stuff and i'm going downstairs and she's like begging me not to go downstairs she's like no, 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 don't leave. Like, please don't leave. I'm sorry, he was joking. This, that, and the next. But to be honest, I could care less. I'm more worried about getting myself out of there right now. So then in the mix of her apologizing, she decides that she's gonna be manipulative. She's like, well, who's gonna drive you home? Cause I'm not doing it. Well, while I'm running down the stairs, I stop in my tracks and I look over to the living room cause going down the stairs, you could see like the part of the house where you walk in. I think it's called a foyer. I'm, I don't know. And then on the other side of the stairs, you could see into the living room. Tell me why I look into the living room and her dad is laying naked, naked on the couch. At this point, it ain't even a surprise. It ain't even a surprise. So I'm just like, nope, 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 nope. Because I'm pretty sure he was waiting downstairs for me. Like, she probably was like, okay, yeah, like, I'll get her and then I'll bring her down. Oh, and not to mention, also, when we were up in her room, she was like, but he'll pay you to fuck him. Which was even more disgusting. And they were super rich, by the way. Like, this guy, he owned a bunch of companies. He was just a rich pig. Yeah. That's how we'll describe it. And I start running even faster to the door and he starts chasing after me. Mmm, we love that for me. So, he's like, sweetie, what's wrong? Where are you going? As he has no clothes on. Ugh. So while I'm literally like in the middle of their driveway, I turn around while I'm covering my eyes and I'm like, that's what's fucking wrong. And then I run to my lift, which is waiting two doors down for me. I get in the car, I leave, I call my best friend and I tell her all about it. We became friends again. And now I see this girl occasionally at parties. And every time that I see her, she says, the offer's still on the table if you want to take it. Like her dad is literally obsessed with me. I actually got a restraining order against him because he literally would not stop coming to my school. Like he would leave notes on my car and stuff like that. And he would just like follow me whenever I was walking out of my classes. This is when I was in college, by the way. And just like trying to talk to me and like sending me mail, inviting me on vacation and shit like that. Story time about how my husband left me for my sister and married her four days later. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. My husband and I have only been married for two years. Two years ago, my sister and I went on vacation. A few days into our trip, we were at a bar and we met this group of guys. My husband was one of those guys. He basically flirted with us the whole time. And I could tell that he didn't know which one of us to choose. So I made it easy for him. I told him that I liked him and that I wanted him tonight to go on a date. So that let my sister know that she had to back off. My sister actually ended up hooking up with one of his other friends that night. We all hung out together for the rest of the trip. I started falling in love with him really fast. When the vacation was over, my sister and I went back home. My future husband and I would basically talk on the phone every single day. A few weeks later, he even started talking about moving to my state. I really thought he was totally committing to me because he wanted to move closer to me. Fast forward a few months later, we moved in together. We got engaged and soon after we got married. My whole family was really happy for me and my sister was too. My sister ended up being my bridesmaid and everything was great. She and my fiance ended up spending a lot of time together. I mean, she was helping me plan the wedding and she was my bridesmaid so I didn't think anything of it. Fast forward to a year later. I ended up landing a great job. This job had me traveling two times out of the week. My husband mostly worked from home. Because I'm such a good wife I decided to ask my sister to go over to my house and cook for him once in a while. After a few weeks of working my new job I decided to come home early and I didn't tell my husband. I found him with my sister in the jacuzzi. 
I walk into my husband and my sister sitting really close in the jacuzzi. Of course, they were both in their bathing suits. This car is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. When they saw me, they basically jumped apart. I could tell they were startled. I stared at them without saying anything for a few seconds. I was angry. That's when my husband jumps out of the jacuzzi and comes to give me a big hug. Side note, he and I never used that jacuzzi. We basically never used it because he never wanted to clean it. And I had even told him that we should just sell it if that was the case. But of course, as soon as my sister comes over, he's willing to clean it so that they can use it. Together. My sister, of course, jumped out of the jacuzzi too, and she offered to serve me some dinner. And basically, I just told her she could leave. That's when she looked at me with her angry face, which I know very well, and she actually did leave. After that, I had a terrible, terrible feeling in my gut. I knew that something was up right away because they jumped apart really fast. They knew they got caught. Because I traveled so much, I knew that this was probably going to happen again. So I did the only logical thing. I bought a baby cam and synced it to my phone. It basically looked like a table decoration, but it recorded video and sound. Put it above the fireplace in our bedroom. And I also put one in the living room. Of course, my husband didn't notice one bit. What do you know? The same day I left on a trip, my sister shows up. The baby cam alerted me when there was movement in the house. Little did they know, I was recording the whole thing. Video and sound. Approximately two minutes after she came into the house, they started to kiss. By the way, I was on a train watching this all go down. I wanted to faint. Their faces were basically stuck to each other for five minutes. I see my husband and my sister full on kissing. It's as if their faces were stuck to each other for five minutes. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. They look so comfortable with each other, which led me to believe that this had started a long time ago. By the way, I'm watching all of this go down through my cell phone. I had installed a baby cam before I left on my next work trip. I recorded the entire thing. I knew they would both deny it unless I had physical proof. I was so enraged, I canceled my work trip. I got on a train back home. I was only 30 minutes away from my house. And yes, I was still watching them the whole time I was going home. I jumped into an Uber and had him drop me off a block away from my house. I didn't want them to know I was nearby. I opened the front door quietly and there they were on the couch, still stuck together. I grabbed my sister by the hair and pulled her over the couch. With the purse that was already in my hand, I started hitting my husband. He then pinned my arms down to my sides and told me to leave the house. You heard that right. He kicked me out. I went straight to my parents' house and showed them the video. Then my dad was so angry we actually ended up going back to my house. But of course my husband didn't let us in. Then he showed me the divorce papers. He told me if I didn't sign them that he would take all of my money because ultimately I did make more money than him. My sister was standing behind him the whole time. My dad and I left and I don't even know how this happened but four days later they were married. My sister came to my parents' house and told them the news. He fully expected them to be happy for her. He even moved into the house that I basically paid for. Still haven't been able to get all of my things out. Did I go over there and grab my things? Should I sue him? What do you guys think I should do? P.S. My sister's pregnant. This is why you shouldn't go hunting alone at night. I'm a hunter and I like to hunt wild boar specifically. For those of you that don't know, boar are a big problem in the U.S. A sow can have two litters a year and it's not uncommon for a litter to consist of 10 or more pigs. Given that pigs eat anything and everything, it's not hard to see why the Department of Fish and Wildlife makes it legal to hunt them with almost no restrictions. In my state, it's illegal to hunt most large animals with night or thermal vision scopes with the exception of boar and coyote. I'd been saving for a year. When I got it, I took it to a range and sighted it in. There was an area that was peppered with boar activity that I knew would be perfect for a night hunt. The night started uneventful, mostly me tinkering with my new toy, cycling through the settings. I was a little impatient. I spotted multiple deer, but they were out of season, and like I mentioned earlier, my current setup wasn't legal for deer. I moved to another spot I'd seen days earlier that probably wasn't much better than my first, but it gave me something to do and a new angle to look around with a new scope. After an hour or so of glassing the area, it dawned on me. This spot doesn't have much animal activity at all. No rabbits or owls, and the deer that I'd seen were hundreds of yards from where I was. Why was this pocket of land so dead at night but lively in the day? I'd set up around 10 p.m. and it was about 2 a.m. when I started to think about packing up, maybe setting up a target before I left. I heard a crunch come from the direction I came from before. I panned my scope over and saw a silhouette of a small bear. It's important to note that my scope isn't exactly night vision, it's a thermal scope. Kind of like a black and white version of what you see in the Predator movies. I adjusted my range and zoomed in. I remember jolting a little when I saw that it wasn't actually a bear, it was a man. Because he was so low and hunched over, I thought I was looking at a young bear. Is that a game warden? It couldn't be. I would have seen the headlights coming up the road from where I was perched. And where would he have walked from? I was 30 miles away from anything on public lands. I was about to call out when I noticed he was naked. No shoes, pants, or anything. I remember being disturbed by his movements like a squirrel or something, twitching and grabbing at the foliage, sniffing around and palming the tree. Was that my tree? The one I had been leaning against earlier? Could he smell me? The thought terrified me. Then he did something that I still have nightmares about to this day. He squatted and placed his hands in the dirt between his feet and stared straight up like a dog mid howl. And I heard it, a voice coming from that direction, a female voice. Help! I'm lost! There was a long pause but neither of us moved a muscle. Part 2 Why You Shouldn't Go Hunting Alone At Night The center of my sights was trained at the dirt in front of his feet. I couldn't bring myself to aim directly at another person. Were they lost? Was it some guy that had gone crazy out here? Why was his voice so feminine? Help! Please! I can't walk! The voice called out. That's when I called BS. Not only could he walk, but when I first saw him, he was traversing the land with ease for a naked person. So good that I mistook him for a bear. That's a napping trap. This guy's trying to lure me to him with some damsel in distress routine. Luckily, the lack of activity 
before had called me the back up most of my gear. I think I may have left behind a hat and a sitting pad, but I didn't give a shit in that moment. I took my eyes off of him for a moment to get my pack on. I buckled my chest trap and scrambled for my rifle. To my horror, he was in the same position, but his face was staring in my direction, and I swear I saw a smile. How the hell had he heard me get up and put my gear on? He must have been easily 150 yards away. F off, I screamed in that direction. He stood upright and it hit me how tall and skinny he was. Easily six feet and very lean. Take a couple of long strides in my direction and I instinctively set the round ceiling above his head into the tree line. He was freaky as hell, but he hadn't really threatened me. What would I tell the cops? He stopped dead in his tracks and hunched down on all fours. I yelled out, the next one will F you up. Go away. He stayed on all fours and this time I had my sights on the center of him. His eyes were just above the grass like a large cat or something. I was trying to stop my trembling and knew that my voice cracked a little on the last warning. I was terrified. That stand up probably only lasted a couple of minutes, maybe less, but it felt like forever. In an instant, he pulled a graph towards the tree line and opposite of the road. So much for not being able to walk. I couldn't keep him in my scope, he was moving so fast. He disappeared into the brush and I sent another round sailing high in his direction. I bolted in my truck and I wanted to get out of there. I could hear him in the distance, yelling in this weird sound that could have been a laugh or a cry. I scrambled up the trail and arrived at my truck breathless. I tossed my gear into the cab but kept the rifle in the passenger seat and sped off. I reported to fishing game, but all they did was school me for hunting at night alone. And I never got an update. It wasn't until I told this story at a camping trip that my nephew told me about Wendigos, Rakes, and Skinwalkers. My story scared the piss out of him because the spot we were camping was technically the same forest I'd seen that bastard. He was so spooked that his mom had to take him home and she was really pissed. I'm not sure what that thing was, but I dodged quite a bullet that night. Am I the asshole for selling my husband's Xbox to buy back the antique set that he sold without consent? Me, female, 33, and my husband, male, 31, have been struggling with money lately. I work at a hair salon while he works at a gas station and we have minimum wages that barely pay the rent and other expenses. We don't have savings nor do we have the ability to save money and it's been like this for years. Recently, I found out that the antique set that my grandmother gifted me was gone. My husband sold it for $300 to buy a gaming chair for his nephew who's a recovering cancer patient. I told him the set was important to me and I wasn't willing to let it go, especially not for a gaming chair. He explained that I don't use the tea set like ever so it just sits in the cabinet. Am I the asshole for selling my husband's Xbox to buy back the antique set that he sold without consent? He said he promised his nephew the gaming chair for beating cancer and that he would get me a new modern tea set. I refused to let go of it. The buyer said I had to pay for 50 which was unfair. I sold the only thing my husband had that was worth money which was his Xbox. Got 400 and paid off the buyer. My husband found out and went off asking how I could do this to him. I said I sold the Xbox since he was the one who gave away my antique set so he was responsible for getting it back. He said he promised to get me a new one and I said it was about the sentimental value. He called me childish and said that I sold the only thing keeping him entertained in these awful times. Am I the asshole for going to my wife's favorite restaurant without her after she didn't cook for me? For the past month, I, 28 male, have worked 15 hours per day only to see that my wife, 26 female, didn't leave any dinner for me while she made her own dinner. When I asked her why, she said it's not her job to cook for me. Today was the last straw, so I got takeout from her favorite restaurant and had it at home without giving her any. She was upset and asked why I would be so petty, so I told her that it's not my job to work 15-hour shifts and pay for her food, just like she said it's not her job to cook for me. We are now married, and I think we need to work on helping each other. It's not okay to be selfish. She's a stay-at-home wife, and I clean and do the laundry, and she does cooking and grocery shopping. So am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for refusing to do anything that my girlfriend wanted me to do during my two weeks off work? Me and my girlfriend have lived with each other for just under a year and we've been seeing each other for four years and change. Recently, I earned a promotion at work and I've worked my butt off. They wouldn't actually need me for my new role for about a month and I finally decided to cash in on some of my paid time off and take off 10 days. When my girlfriend found out, she put in the first week of my time off from her job as well. I told her that I'm glad to be able to spend time with her, but I just want to hang out and do nothing for my two weeks off and just watch Netflix or whatever. However, she bought paint and painting supplies for us to work on the guest room together, and she also planned for us to go to the parents' cabin up north. When I found out about her plans, I told her no. 